hey everybody welcome to engineering academy and in this video I'll be talking about the design of single reinforced beam and this video will be dedicated towards the theoretical recap that you need for the design purpose you should never ever try to solve the numericals without having a complete knowledge of the theoretical concepts alright so once you have all the theoretical concepts that is required as per your slavers or as per the book so you can solve any type of problem but if you have only you know the practice some practice of few questions and what if the you know you encounter some questions that are out of your practice right so if you have theoretical knowledge then you can solve them but if you don't have theoretical knowledge then you will be stuck there so it is necessary to have theoretical knowledge before you try to solve the numerical problems alright so always keep this thing in mind always have good theoretical concept and this thing will help you in your career also right okay so moving on uh, let me first give you the introduction of singly reinforced beam right so this is AutoCAD and I have drawn a beam here so you know that there is load oops and uh, so this is the section of the beam right so we know that concrete is strong in compression and weak in tension alright so I have explained in one of my previous video that there is a line that passes somewhere here and that this is an imaginary line alright so this doesn't actually pass through your real beam so this is just an imaginary line and uh, so above the, this line there is compressive force and below this line there is tension force right so in this tone we don't have any problem because concrete is strong in compression and we have compressive force here but in this region there is tensile force and concrete is weak in tension so what we do is that we provide these kind of rebars right so these rebars this is the section and this is the longitudinal section we, the bar goes throughout and so we provide these kind of rebars that take the tensile force of the concrete right so if we provide these reinforcement at the bottom region only it is known as the singly reinforced beam and if we provide this reinforcement at the bottom as well as at the top then it is known as the doubly reinforced beam so this is the definition of the singly reinforced beam all right okay so after knowing what a singly reinforced uh, beam is uh, now let us talk about the moment of resistance of the beam right so we got a beam here and it is loaded right and due to load the moment is induced that is m or shear force is also induced L let us talk about the moment only here right so uh, the moment is induced here right so to resist that moment the beam also produces a contracting moment so that moment is known as the moment of resistance of the beam alright so to find the value of moment of resistance we have to find these things alright so what are these okay so we know that uh, so this is the neutral axis that our imaginary line and above this we have the compressive force that acts at a certain point uh, alright so this which is denoted by C and below it we have got the tensile force and it acts on these reverse right okay so the distance of the line of action of this compressive force from the top extreme fiber is given by A so that is denoted by A right so distance from here top extreme fiber up to here so this distance is denoted by A alright so the total depth of the beam is D that is from here the top point up to the bottom point so this total distance is D capital D and the effective depth of the beam is D so the effective depth is distance from here this point up to the center of these rebars right so this is small d that is known as the effective depth of the beam alright so okay so we know that compressive force C then we know that there acts the tensile force T and the distance between compressive force and the tensile force that is Z is known as the lever arm so we find the value of C we find the value of T and we find the value of moment of resistance of the beam alright so the total compressive force C is given by 0 0.36 times FCK times B into X so you will get uh, the de derivation of this formula from any standard textbook alright so you can follow any standard textbook and you can get the derivation of this formula right so here FCK is the characteristic strength of the uh, concrete or that is the compressive strength of the concrete you can say and B here is the breadth of the beam so that is uh, this distance so this distance is the B breadth of the beam and 
x here is the depth of the neutral axis. So depth of neutral axis means here we have got neutral axis here, right? So depth means the distance from this point, that is top extreme fiber, up to this point. So this depth is known as the depth of neutral axis. The value of a, so that is this a, the value of a is given by 0.42 times of x that is 0.42 times the depth of neutral axis all right so we get the value of a okay so similarly total tensile force that is we got the value of compressive force here now the tensile for total tensile force so you must have noticed this thing that if c is acting inward t is acting outward all right so they these two forces must act in the opposite directions okay Okay, so uh, so T, the value of tensile force is given by 0 0.87 times Fy AST. Here Fy is the yield strength of the rebar and AST is the area of steel. Alright, okay, so to find the value of X, that is to find the depth of the neural axis, what we have to do is that we have to equate total compressive force and the total tensile force. Alright, so C is equal to T, that is at the equilibrium condition. Then we find the value of X as 0 0.87 Fy AST by 0 0.36 Fck times of B. All right, so, all right. Now let me let me give you uh, another concept. Okay. All right, so we got uh, four bars here, right? So now let us increase the area of reinforcement. So we just increase the area of reinforcement. That is, let's just, let us just double this the area of reinforcement. All right. So we make it eight. Now by doing this, what happens is that once we increase the area of reinforcement, the depth of neutral axis increases that is neutral axis shifts downward like this all right so the depth has increased the depth of the neutral axis has increased okay so so if the depth of neutral axis increases or the area of reinforcement goes on increasing what happens that the concrete fails first and the these rebar fail later in case of earthquake or you know uh, any kind of structural damage so concrete fails first the rebar fails later so this type of failure is known as the brittle failure which is not accepted all right so we never want the brittle failure to happen we always want the ductile failure to happen all right so for the ductile failure to happen the area of reinforcement must be limited so by doing this the depth of the neutral axis is also limited which means that we can increase the uh, neutral axis depth up to a certain point only. The maximum point up to where we can increase the neutral axis depth is known as the maximum depth of the neutral axis. All right. So this uh, depends upon the grade of steel. So if it's 250 newton per mm square, so if the uh, yield strength of uh, steel is 250 newton per mm square, then the XM that is the maximum depth of neutral axis is given by 0 0.53 times of effective depth D. Similarly, if it's Fe 415 is steel, then we have 0 0.48 times of D, and if it's uh, 5 Fe 500, we get 0 0.46 times of D. All right. Okay. So now uh, the value of the lever arm Z here, we can see Z is distance from here to here, right? From this point up to the center of this steel, and D is the distance from top extreme fiber up to the center of this steel, right? So Z is given by this D from here to here minus here to here if we do we'll get this value so z is basically d minus a so we know a is 0 0.42 times our depth of neural axis right so here by this formula we can get the depth uh, depth of or the distance of the lever arm all right so moment of resistance with respect to concrete okay so moment of resistance with respect to concrete means that here we are assuming the concrete fails first and after that only the steel fails so it is given by 0 0.36 times fck times b times z so 0 0.36 we know so FCK is the compressive strength, B is the breadth, and Z is the lever arm. All right. So if we put the value of Z here, we'll get the equation in terms of this equation in terms of x, right? So Z d minus 0 0.42 times of x. All right. So the, we know that the depth of neutral axis is limited, right? So the moment of resistance of the beam is also limited. Right, this maximum moment of resistance of the beam is known as limiting moment of resistance, which is denoted by m lim. So, all right, so it uh, is given by this formula. Okay, so if it is Fe two fifty steel, then m lim 
that is the limiting moment of resistance of the uh, beam is given by 0 0.148 FCK BD square and if it's FE415 then the value is 0 0.138 FCK BD square and if it's FE500 then it's 0 0.133 FCK BD square. Alright so moment of resistance with respect to steel uh, it means that uh, we are assuming the steel fails first and after that only the concrete fails. It is given by 0 0.87 FY AST times of G. So here 0 0.87 we know it and Fy is the yield stress or the yield strength of the steel and AST is the area of steel and Z is the lever arm. So if we put the value of Z as 0 0.D minus 0 0.42 times of X and if you also put the value of X like this and we will get the final equation as this one. Right? So, uh, so we need this formula and these formulae. So we need uh, for you know solving the equations uh, for single reinforced beam and also for the double reinforced beam and also for the slab. So we'll need we'll need this formula, right? So you need to uh, remember these formulae. All right. Okay. So this much for this video. Hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching. Take care.